What's going on everybody? Dream being here and today I'm going to show you how to reroute your individual drum tracks to what's called a bus track and how to use this bus track to give your drums more richness, more fullness and to have more control over them and how to glue them together to have more cohesiveness in your drums as a whole. So we have our newly created bus track and the first thing we want to do is, is we want to go to each individual drum track and unroute them from the master and reroute it to that newly created bus track. To do that, we're going to select each drum track. We're going to unroute it from the master by clicking on the arrow above the circle on the master track and then clicking on the arrow on the newly created drum bus track here. So that unroutes that drum track from the master and reroutes it back to the newly created drum bus. And we're going to do that for each of the drum tracks. And there you have your drums routed to your newly created bus track. The two processes that I like to use in mixing on a bus track are saturation and compression. The first plugin in this stage is saturation. I have open here J37 by Waves. I'm going to turn it on, I'm going to start the loop, and I'm going to bring this input level until the needle on this meter is hitting somewhere around this zero mark just before it's clipping in that red area. So let's turn on the plugin and let's start the loop. Next, I'm going to add a compressor. I have open Waves SSL G Bus Master Compressor. In this case, I don't want to do compression so much as I want to control or glue the whole of the drum mix together. So I'm only looking for about 2 to 3 dB of gain reduction on the meter here. And I want the attack and release pretty slow as I don't want to affect the transients. I just want to control the volume level as a whole. So I'm going to adjust my attack to 3. I'm going to set my release to auto. I'm going to make sure my ratio is at two. I'm going to start the loop. And then I'm going to start adjusting this threshold until I'm seeing that two to three dB of gain reduction. So you see how it's just below that 3? That's a good enough level for the threshold there. Now that I've done the compressor processing, I will have affected the gain level of this track. I'm going to turn off the compressor, and I'm going to see what the track was peaking at before doing any compression. So it looks like it was peaking at around negative 15, and when I turn on the compressor, it's right in between negative 15 and negative 18. So I'll say that it's at negative 17. So on the makeup gain level here on the compressor, I need to bring that level up by two decibels or until it's back at the level that it was before doing that compression. So let's start the loop again and bring up this makeup gain until we were at the level we were before doing any compression. Now we're back at that negative 15 level where the peak is before we had done any compression. So now that I've done this processing, I'm going to AB the loop a couple times with the plugins on and with them off. So as you can hear, a lot more richness and fullness from the saturation and a lot more gelling or gluing of the highest level drum tracks with the lowest level drum tracks from that slight compression occurring there. So hopefully this helps. Hopefully more producers start doing this as it's a great way to get more control over elements of your mix. 
and hopefully this helps. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good day.